Do you still think that Bitcoin is this magical internet money supposedly used by criminals and gamblers or speculators? Well, if you do, then congratulations, you played yourself. In today's video, we're gonna break down two of the biggest problems we all face and how Bitcoin can solve it. What's up guys? Welcome to another episode on the crypto rabbit hole. I'm your host, CH. So what are these big issues we all face? Allow me to break it down. The first one is quantitative easing. This is where the government prints new money, causes inflation, and devalues our currency. The second is fractional reserve banking, aka the banks keeping only a fraction of your deposit and lending out the rest of your money. No matter how you look at it, Bitcoin is the answer. Allow me to explain. I wanna start by asking you this question. Have you guys noticed that everything around you seemed to be getting more expensive? I know I have. The US Consumer Price Index, CPI, has risen by 5% within the past year. This is what inflation looks like. Inflation means your money is worth less over time because of the devaluation of the currency. This has been evident since the 1900s. $1 in 1933 could buy you 10 beers. Today, you wouldn't be able to afford one beer with that same dollar. Would you like me to buy you alcohol? That would be lovely. Inflation is a result of quantitative easing, QE, which is where the Federal Reserve buys up a bunch of different assets by issuing new money. Since COVID, the situation has gotten a lot worse. So why is this happening? The government had to print a bunch of money to try to stimulate the economy in response to COVID. Every time they print money, they're devaluing your cash savings. Let's put it this way. Would you want something that's abundantly available or do you want something that's really rare and scarce? The US, by the way, has already printed over $6 trillion after the pandemic. That means that over 40% of all US dollars were printed in the last year. You might have heard of hyperinflation happening in different parts of the world. Take for example, Venezuela. Hyperinflation there got so bad that Bloomberg came up with the Cafe Con Leche Index where they send a reporter every Wednesday to this one cafe to track the price of a cup of coffee. I'm gonna get some coffee, you want some coffee? No, thank you, I'm fine. Just in the past year alone, one cup of coffee went from 290,000 Bolivar to 6.9 million Bolivar, a 2,300% increase. Hyperinflation doesn't just destroy your cash saving, it demolishes the economy. Many vendors can't hold on to basic essentials and shops are left empty. This drives up unemployment as salaries can't keep up with inflation. In October of 2019, the unemployment rate in Venezuela was a staggering 35%. Another famous example is Zimbabwe, where the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe had to print $100 trillion bills. What if you live in a country like Japan? Congratulations. Having savings there becomes a liability because you have to pay these banks to hold your money, AKA negative interest rates. When governments print money, a tsunami of cash that floods the market will pump the asset prices. This is actually the biggest cause of wealth inequality. The rich get richer because of the assets going up in price and the poor get poorer because their cash is being devalued. Just look at the S&P 500 equities market. It's been up 441% since they started printing money in response to the 2008 financial crisis. And it's not just the stock market. Blue chip art even outperformed the stock market. And the real estate market is going bonkers. Even private school tuition is going up. Asset prices are going up. Not because the economy is great, but because the dollar value in which they're denominated in is going down. We're in the middle of a pandemic. Why is, why is everything pumping so hard? And this is how the rich get richer because they own assets. On the other hand, the guy who's working three jobs just to put food on the table for his kids, his cash savings have lost 24% of its value since 2008. So let's just say you have some cash in the bank, you're maybe generating 1% interest. Actually, that's overshooting it. Right now, realistically, you're maybe getting 0.5% if you're lucky. But let's just keep it very simple, you know, 1%. In real terms, you're actually losing 4% because the inflation rate is 5%. So if you're just sitting on your bum, you're doing nothing with your cash, you're not investing it, you're losing a lot of money. Almost half of all Americans don't have any investments. At the end of the day, money printing leads to inflation. Inflation leads to inequality. Inequality triggers social unrest. It's a vicious cycle. Bummer. Meanwhile, Bitcoin has been the best performing asset of all time compounding at 200% annually since inception. The first time Bitcoin was priced in dollar terms was in 2009, 
at a price of 0.0009. 12 years later, it hit an all-time high of $69,000. Wow, you're so dominant. What's amazing is that we're still so early in this. It is the best asymmetric bet of our lifetime. Ray Dalio, founder of Bridgewater Associates, the largest hedge fund in the world, with assets under management of $140 billion. has famously said that cash is trash and that he'd rather own Bitcoin over bonds. Another prominent figure, and perhaps my favorite Bitcoin influencer, Michael Saylor, who is an MIT graduate, a rocket scientist, and founder and CEO of MicroStrategies. He has said that they were sitting on a $500 million melting ice cube and that they feel pretty confident that Bitcoin is less risky than holding cash, less risky than holding gold. If you don't own finite or scarce assets and you're only sitting on cash savings in your bank, then inflation is eating away your wealth. Oh no. One thing to keep in mind is that, you know the money you have sitting in the bank? Yeah, technically it's not actually yours. It's really an IOU from the bank. Another way to think about this is fractional reserve banking, which is actually how our current monetary system functions. This is where the banks are legally allowed to lend out 90% of your deposits while only keeping 10% of it in reserves. This is what blew up in the 2008 financial crisis. They were lending out your money to these risky borrowers, creating the biggest credit bubble in history. When it fell apart, the taxpayers were the ones who footed the bill and bailed out these big banks. That's messed up. And here's a scary story for you. One I like to call the great robbery of Cyprus. No, I'm not talking about criminals going inside of a bank to rob it. I'm talking about the government of Cyprus literally taking people's savings from the bank accounts without their consent overnight. This happened in March of 2013. Cyprus never really fully recovered from the 2008 financial crisis. They had to come up with 7.5 billion euros to protect their banks from catastrophic failure. The Bank of Cyprus imposed a one-time tax on its depositors and exchanged worthless bank shares with them. Anyone who had over 100,000 euros would see 47.5% of it get taken away by the banks. This resulted in over 4 billion euros being taken overnight. This means that if you had a million euros in the bank, 47.5% of 900,000, which came up to 427,500, would be taken away overnight. Gone, just like that. This is actually the point which Bitcoin clicked for the Winklevoss twins, in which was described in the book, Bitcoin Billionaires. Remember, this is not a dictatorship. This is a democratic nation in the European Union. Is this how you conduct yourself in a democracy? What the hell are you doing, man? Now, if you're living in the US, maybe you're thinking, oh, there's no way this would happen here. It'd be completely illegal. Think again. In 2010, after the financial crisis, a bill was passed called the Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Act, essentially created a new safety net for the banks called statutory bail-ins. What that means is, if the banks messed up again, like they did in 2008, they're legally allowed to take your money to cover their asses. I said, no, what? So not only can the government take away your money at any time they want, they can also print as much money as they want. Where's the fairness in that? Godfrey Bloom, a notable British politician and author, has openly talked about this. We call the whole system a scam. It is my opinion that you do not really understand the concept of banking. All the banks are broke. They're broke because we have a system called fractional reserve banking, which means that banks can lend money that they don't actually have. It's a criminal scandal and it's been going on for too long. And most of the problem starts in politics and central banks, which are part of the same political system. We have counterfeiting, sometimes called quantitative easing, but counterfeiting by any other name. The artificial printing of money, which if any ordinary person did, they'd go to prison for a very long time. And yet governments and central banks do it all the time. So when banks go broke through their own incompetence and chicanery, the taxpayer picks up the tab. It's theft from the taxpayer. And until we start sending bankers, and I include central bankers and politicians, to prison for this outrage, it will continue. Bitcoin solves both of these issues. Because of the decentralized nature of it, you and only you have control of your Bitcoin. No governments can ever take that away from you. What Bitcoin comes down to is digital scarcity. It's not just scarce, but finite, mathematically programmed to be fixed at a maximum supply of 21 million coins it is impossible to make more of it, unlike the US dollar. On-chain data shows that almost 11 million Bitcoin haven't been moved in over a year. 
That's over 60% of total supply. There's an estimated 4 million coins gone forever due to accidents, forgotten passwords, and death. The pseudonymous creator of Bitcoin, Satoshi Nakamoto, has 1 million coins that have never been moved and probably never will. That means the whole world needs to battle out on the remaining 16 million coins. There are over 56 million millionaires in the world. It is a mathematical certainty that not all millionaires can own one Bitcoin. So it is super, super scarce. The rules of Bitcoin are completely set. It's been the same since inception. It is impossible to alter without the consent of the rest, which at this point is not possible. In response to central banks printing unprecedented amount of money, ordinary folks and institutions are waking up to the impending inflation. Conventionally, gold has been the go-to tool to fight against inflation. However, in the digital age, Bitcoin is the best inflation hedge and store of value. Shout out to Jason Williams and his book, Bitcoin, Hard Money You Can't F*** With. Many of the core concepts highlighted in this video were from this book. It's a very easy read, uses simple language, and it's very humorous. Definitely go check it out. So if you don't want anybody to f*** with your money, please help me f*** up that like button. If you like the content, consider subscribing and hit that notification bell so that you know when I release my next video. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next journey.